Hi garden friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Era and this is Gardening on Purpose. Today I want to do a quick tour with you to see how the garden is looking, what's blooming, what's burnt out, what's not doing too well, what's done for the season. And um, it's been really, 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 really hot. And I mean, we've been in 90s all week and we're going to be in the 90s again tomorrow. So the best time to really do these videos um, to prevent me from melting is anything after 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I ran outside, I took a break from work and I ran outside to do this video because otherwise it just won't get done. So I'm not going to show you every single plant but kind of just highlight what needs to be highlighted. So for example, this garden bed here. I finally figured out what I'm going to do with it. I put an evergreen, a wintergreen boxwood, which is a Korean boxwood in the middle, and that will stay there year round. And around it, I have some artisan um, cone flowers and some perennial um, lantana. Now, I just put these um, cone flowers in, so they're already drooping because it's so it's been so hot. So, but they'll perk up. And they'll be fine and so and then of course I have my salvia the two salvias at each side this is the rose marvel salvia and then I have a random um, what is the name of that again a random marigold that got reseeded I didn't plant that and that's the beauty about stuff when you don't plant them they perform so well look at all the buds on this marigold but I have nowhere else to put it I had actually had marigolds in here early, early in the season. I took them out, but I guess one of them receded. So I'm just going to leave it there until it dies back. There's no need to move it. Um, and then this garden bed here, another circular garden bed again. In the front is some rose marvel uh, salvia. And then some veronicas in the middle. These purple guys here. And look, another marigold stuck, you know, crept in there. And... So beautiful. I might actually take this one out and put it in a fall container for the front of the house, but I'll but look, I'll figure that out. But look at all the buds on this thing. I love marigolds. And of course I have the pow wow coneflower. Still doing great. Um some of it is doing great, some is burnt out. I've seen some birds taking the seeds from these, so I'm glad I did not cut the seeds off. Although I did on some other ones, I'm glad I left these here. So these are doing well. So this is mostly like a purplish bed. And then over in this, the newest garden bed in the yard. And mind you, this is the backyard. Of course, I have a side and a front, but that will take some more videos. In the front here, I've got some blanket flower that are kind of on their last leg. Um, but they're so pretty. I've got some spurge right there. I've got some hummingbird mint right there. That's a dwarf one. I want to get a, actually a taller one. It's just so small. Of course, I have my two um, lilies, the day lilies, one here and one there. They're done for the for the day, for the year. But of course, I won't chop anything down until the spring. I don't cut my stuff all the way down because we get a lot of rain in the winter, and I want the plants to have some protection. So I don't cut things back until like probably February. Um, my yarrow is on a second flush, but it's probably done. Same thing with the Coreopsis right there. My, um, what is this called again? This is Mexican, Mexican, Mexican petunia. This has been doing so well. I was scared to put it in the ground because I heard a lot of stories about how it receives a lot and it can become invasive but I took a chance and I put it in the ground and it's been doing really really well it blooms every day and as you can see it drops its purple petals in the night and then tomorrow there will be a brand new set of purple petals I've got some white Veronica here again some other art artisan cone flowers I hope they make it they I mean I just put them in so they're looking all droopy and sad my plumbago over there, those two plumbagos, you saw me put a video with those two guys. They're doing well. They're supposed to get four feet. I don't know if they meant in one season. I was hoping, which is why they're in the back of the bed, 
but we'll see how that goes. Um, what else? Um, I've got my, what else? I got salvias in here that are doing well. I've got an agapanthus that has not rebloomed since I trimmed it back. Oh, I took the, the petal from the last one off. It has not rebloomed. So I'm wondering what's the story there. But this is the bed. I really, really like this bed. Once I took those overgrown butterfly bushes out, it really opened the space for me to put more little plants in and kind of get to my ultimate goal. Um, I have this Tom Thumb Arborvita that is doing really, really, really well in this container. I'm going to leave it there. Is doing really I bought this thing on its last leg I mean the, the pot was ripped the roots were ripped out it was on the floor at home at, at Lowe's and I brought it home and it's doubled in size and that was last year um, my hibiscus of course you know the hibiscus closes the petals and drops them every night so there's none showing here at 8 p.m. but they're gonna be there in tomorrow and then some other you know things that look kind of rough my um, roses need to be trimmed, but I think they're, um, I don't know what to do with this one. This is the double knockout, or the knockout rose, I'm sorry. The bed needs a little cleaning up. My liatris, they're done. They're completely done. I had a pink and a white one. Of course, I, the sedum is coming up. I actually bought those um, red hot pokers um, beer root. And I was under the impression that they were going to bloom this year, but they did not. I mean, it's the end of August pretty much, and nothing's happening. So maybe next year. And, of course, my powwow cone flowers, I mistakenly cut them off thinking that I was going to get a second flush. But ever since I cut them back, I haven't had a second flush, which I was very disappointed about. But ultimately, they're doing, they were doing, they did, they did really, really, really well this season. Um... I've got some yarrow that's under a second flush. But as you know, the second flush is not as great as, as the first. So I barely have blooms, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Then I got this beautiful purple buddleia. Really, really pretty. I hope it doesn't get any bigger than this, because if it does, I'm going to have to take it out. Because it's already, you know, taking up a lot of space on that sunshine ligustrum right there. And it's right on top of the powwow um, very berry. And it's right on top of my white gora. I mean, you could barely see the white gora in there. So I might take it out. I might take it out because um, I don't want my gora to die. Um, what else do I have? I have mums that everybody told me, you need to pinch them back. They need to pinch them back or they won't bloom. Well, they're going to bloom. Look at that. That's the second flush getting ready to come out. It's probably not going to come out until um, September, October. But I had a really nice flush in the spring. And I thought that I made a mistake by not cutting them back or pinching them back. But they got rid of those old blooms. And now they're getting ready to set up for the fall. So I really hope that those come out good. The balloon flowers... And excuse the noise, this is the cicadas you're hearing back there every night. I can't wait for them to be done doing whatever they're doing. Um, then we have some balloon flower. They're done. They're pretty much done. My lamb's ear is doing well. Here's another butterfly bush. Another, just the same one. I bought these on clearance at Lowe's. These were pretty much $8 for a two-gallon. So... But I'm really, really hoping they don't get any bigger than this. Um, of course, I have my Color Guard Yucca. I got a bunch of these. They're really small, but I bought them even smaller. And I tell the story all the time. I wasn't happy with the seller because the picture that they showed that they were going to send you was a nice flush plant. But then they send me baby plants. But they were like literally three times less this size. And so I'm really happy about that. Here's my Gora that are slowly dying. Not sure what to do about this. I cut it back and it's not doing any better. I'm going to cut it back again because it's not time for Gora to go to sleep yet. Not sure why it's dying. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's dead, but I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. It should be filled with blooms. 
by now, but it hasn't. I've got a second flush on this um, purple cone flower. As you can see, I cut that down, but these two came back. And this whole section here used to be cone flowers and stuff, um, but something happened with one of them, so it looks kind of bare. So I gotta fix that. Um, lamb's ear looking really nice. I gotta separate that. There's a lot of lamb's ear in here. I literally bought one plant, um, one or two plants. I keep forgetting if it's one or two, and it turns out that I have a bunch of lamb's ear now in my yard, so I'm really willing to give those away. Um, Leatris, they're done. And then I have my autumn fire sedum. This is the autumn fire, it's a little taller than the autumn joy. Um, so it kind of peeled over, not peeled over isn't a bad thing, but it, it flopped and it, um, when, whenever we get really, really bad, uh, rain or wind, it kind of like lays down. So I had to put it on the cage and then I bought this new gold lantana. I'm hoping it's a perennial for me. It did not say perennial on the container that I bought on clearance at Lowe's, but after doing my research, and one of the YouTubers that I follow that I really, really trust his judgment, um, he says that it's supposed to be a perennial for us here in the Southeast United States Zone B. So I'm, I'm really, really hoping that will work out. Um, and then I have a bunch of stuff back here that I'm deciding what to do. Well, I know what I'm gonna do with the, the elephant ears. The elephant ears, I'm gonna actually put them here. I'm gonna expand this, extend this bed, and when this an, when this annual tropical hibiscus dies back and that that um, croton dies back, I will put the lambs ear in there and get them out the containers because they're very very needy when it comes to water. These plants love water and I can't keep up on watering them um, so I prefer to put them in the ground where they have a little bit more insulation. But I have to clean this bed completely up to get that in there. It'll be right next to the canna lilies that are pretty much looking ratty. They're not done but they're looking ratty. They got they got um, attacked by that bug, that roller leaf bug thing. Um, so, but some of them are still blooming. So um, I just need to clean that up and actually spread the rhymes, the rhizomes out for next year because I feel like they're a little bit too crowded. As you can see, I need to kind of clean those up. But they're still blooming. Like this guy here wants to bloom, and then this guy here, really pretty about to bloom maybe come out tomorrow or something um so um okay and then beside that is the iliacnus i bought this with the intention of um kind of creating a buffer between me and the neighbor i read that these were supposed to be fast growing they can grow really really fast 12 inches to 16 inches in a in a season but i haven't experienced that yet so i'm really holding on to hope that these will make their way to becoming a buffer. Um, here is the perennial hibiscus from Proven Winners. I always forget, is it Holy Grail or whatever it is I had, because I lost the tag. But this particular one here, this, this dark leaf, that's Proven Winners. And this light colored leaf, that is a cheap Home Depot brand. But cheap in price but not cheap in flowers because that thing flowered but as you can see there's no flowers because it's after eight o'clock and they close their petals and then come back out in the morning um i just had stuck some vinca in there the vincas don't even belong there but it's too late to move them anyway um the roses doing absolutely great i cannot tell you guys i bought these roses beer root for 9.98 from walmart and they performed. I've brought these in the house. I've made bouquets for people. People can't believe it's from Walmart. And I didn't do anything special but give these things road food. I mean, road food. Rose food. And they've performed really, really, really well. Um, down in this one here, my trailing verbena. Again, I bought for $4 at Lowe's Clearance. Looking nice. Looking really, really nice. My... Um, uh, what do you call this guy here? What you make tea? I always say this and I always forget that this thing is called that you use to make tequila. Um, still deciding what I want to put, where I want to put that. Um, 
my Veronica Speedwell, you know, it's, it's kind of on its last leg. You know, it really, really performed really, really well this year. I'm so, so happy. Um, Daylilies looking good. Um, the daisies are done. I mean, that's looking ready. Um, that's the second flush, though. That's the second flush. So I'm just happy that I got two good flushes out of it. But it's just been so hot. I have just been scared to come outside before I get melt and get burnt up. Um, Veronica Speedwell. I have my... Um, Montauk daisies over here that they're supposed to bloom in the fall so they're all butted up but they're not blooming yet and I, I noticed something about them they're apparently very woody because look what happened they literally just like splitting in there so I might have to move them um, of course there's uh, black eyed Susan and of course one of my favorite plants is the autumn joy sedum getting ready to do the thing and Yes, guys, this is this is a little mini tour. I know I went pretty fast, but you've seen what I have. Nothing special has been added, particularly like anything special, except for the most recent additions, really, have been the cardinal flower, which is this red guy here, which is not doing too well. And again, it's the heat. It's really, really the heat. So that's been new. I think it's the, it's the, the professional name is called... The proper name, professional. The proper name is uh, Lobelia, and that's that's new in there. And of course, like I told you, the artisan cone flowers; those are new too. And I kind of spread these over. I bought these at Home Depot for nineteen ninety nine in a three gallon. But guess what? There were four different plants in there, so I end up I ended up really getting four plants for twenty dollars. And I kind of spread them all over the place. So I put one right there. And then there's two over here. And I bought two containers. So, of course, I'm going to have end up having eight. And then I have these two guys here. And then these guys here. And then there's another one somewhere else that I can't think of right now. Um, but, yes, guys, this is the back garden. Um, here are my um, Japanese maples. Can't wait for them to turn color. One's supposed to be orange, one's supposed to be red. Well, I think two of them are supposed no, one's supposed to be orange, one's supposed to be yellow, and one's supposed to be red. Um, the names are already are on here. I don't know the names offhand, but so for example, this one is Asa Palmatum Ketsura, it looks like. This one is Oregon Sunset, yes, Oregon Sunset. And this one is, I'm thinking Oregon Sunset is going to be orange. And then this one is Winter Red. So this one's going to be red. So yes, guys, this is the garden. At 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Zone 7B. So, so happy with it. And, you know, I add a little light. So I have my solar lights. So at a certain time, the lights come on. That's if we get enough sun. And, you know, I have my little walkways and don't mind my dirty, uh, my dirty garden sneakers right there. But little pathway here that leaves from the patio, my enclosed patio right there that comes all the way around and takes me to the other side of the house slash garden. So, yes, guys, this is the garden. I know it was a quick tour, um, and but this is only the backyard. Um, I do have a lot of work to do in the front. I do have a lot of a lot of work to do in the side yard because that one I'm trying my best to put plants that don't need a lot of attention at the side yard because the side yard I barely go to it and I don't want to have to I don't want to have to forget to take care of it. I want plants that can take care of themselves. Um, so let me know what you guys think guys of the garden. It's August, things are tired, things are pretty much weary. I, I'm tired, I'm tired of watering. There is no rain, we haven't had rain in eight to 10 days. So I'm really, really hoping to get some rain so I could kind of relax and the plants, cause you know the plants prefer rain water over our water. You know, they do so much better um, 
when the when it rains and um, that really helps me out because it's so hot and then sometimes when it does rain it barely even scratches the surface and it doesn't matter so I still have to get up and go hand water again so I need a good drenching a good couple of days of rain so that these plants can be really really happy um, but um let me know what you guys think of the garden if you see anything here that you'd like to know a little bit more about please let me know um, please like please share please subscribe please tell somebody about the channel I will see you on the next video Bye, guys.